All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our walkthrough of Powered by Fivetran, the easiest way for customers to connect their data to your app. We are going to be describing to you today what is Powered by Fivetran in a way that we hope is very exciting and engaging. We're going to be um, talking to you about the solution through a fictional scenario that we've created. And I won't give away any more details because I want it to be a surprise. But I will tell you who you are listening to at the moment. Um, actually, coming on soon is going to be Jimmy Hooker, who is the lead product manager at Fivetran. He's focused exclusively on the solution powered by Fivetran. He's based in our Oakland office. And currently speaking, my name is Shane Switterick. I am on the product marketing team, and I'm also dedicated specifically to powered by Fivetran and also based in our Oakland office. So with that, let's get to that fictional scenario that I referenced. And we'll ask you for a moment if you will imagine that this is you. You are a product manager at a company called Vandalay Software. And your company, Vandalay Software, makes a magical tool that can predict the future. So this tool happens to be a marketing or advertising tool that can tell your customers things like how the daily impressions are going to be impacted or increase in the next month and by what amount they can predict that if you build a smart list based on purchase history, that you're going to boost campaign effectiveness by a certain amount. And they can also tell you things like ads delivered to a particular segment are going to be more successful than ads delivered to another segment. Very valuable information that everyone wants. But there's a catch. In order to predict the future, Vandalay needs data. And unfortunately for you as the product manager, the data happens to live in many different places. Since this is a marketing or advertising application, that data is coming from marketing and advertising data sources. The good news is that you have a very capable and competent team that's motivated. So you together set out to get all the data, you rally the team, and what you find is that getting the data, although it's a boring process, is actually not that bad. So you assign one of your engineers to get data from one of those applications, one of those data sources, and they go through a series of steps. First, they study the API, they create a requirements doc, what data do we want, how frequently do we want to get that data, Next, they create an engineering design doc. So how do you want to implement the requirements in a technical way? What APIs are you going to hit? How are you setting up the sync mechanism? Um, how will you deal with things like error handling? Once you get that figured out, you are designing a schema. Um, this includes columns, tables, and relationships. The data that you're getting out of that application is most likely in a, in a JSON payload. And so you need a way to format that data and put it into an organizational structure that's going to be usable um, for your analytics. After that, you'll do a POC and see um, what happens. And uh, any good software development team after that is going to do some sort of um, QA diligence and eliminate as many of those bugs as possible. And then after that, you're going to release to GA. And then finally, you're going to celebrate. So it's not that bad. It's not that good either. But what's important is that data begins flowing into your app. And that data flowing into your app begins to fuel the predictions that make your app so attractive to your customers. And when we say data is flowing into your app, what we really mean is data is flowing into the data store that is behind your app, that's powering your app. So this could be Snowflake, it could be Redshift, it could be BigQuery, it could be Postgres, but I just wanted to clarify that that's what we mean when we say data is flowing into your app. And because you have such an amazing app, because the app is working, it shouldn't be a su surprise that you quickly acquire new customers. And of course, you and your team are ecstatic. You've worked so hard on this product. Um, you believed in the predictions as providing that they're valuable. And now you're seeing new customers come on and you're seeing revenue come into your company. But then, without notice, it stops working. Data discontinues its flow from the source system into your application. And this spirals your team into a panic. 
you round up your team of engineers and you say, we need to get this fixed as soon as possible. Our customers are angry and we don't want to risk losing some of these customers. And again, because you have a very capable and competent team, they're able to diagnose the problem. And it turns out a number of things have happened. The data source has updated its API, which impacted the mapping that you defined in your scripts that you wrote to extract data. A data type has also changed in the data source, also affecting those that logic that you wrote in those scripts. And then customers have added new fields as well. They've added new columns to the data source that you weren't aware of and didn't accommodate for when you're defining that initial logic. And despite all of this happening, your team is able to fix the issue. Your scripts are updated to match the new API. You've updated the data type from int to float, and you've accounted for those new fields that your customers may have added, and you're very happy as the product manager. But then it happens again and again. And what you realize is that your team is spending an awful lot of time on data pipelines, which concerns you. And not so much on analytics and on Vandalay. And really, these are the things that your customers are actually seeing. They're seeing the analytics exposed in the Vandalay user interface. And you're concerned that Vandalay is beginning to lose its mojo because of this lack of focus on what your customers are seeing. And so you ask yourself, how can you refocus your team on what matters most? There has to be a better way. You imagine a world where data flows into your app perfectly every time, how wonderful would that be? And you wonder, what could you do if you never had to build or fix another data pipeline? Your engineers are thinking we can refine our analytic models and produce even better predictions. Another engineer is thinking as our customer base is growing, we're adding all these new customers. We probably have to refactor our app in a way that's going to scale for all this growth. Your other engineer is thinking about how you can improve the user interface in the front end of your application. And you, of course, as the product manager are saying, we can ship new features that are important to our customers and prospects faster. Now, what would data pipelines in that world need to provide? What have you learned about the experience where those data pipelines didn't work? And your engineers are thinking, we need a solution that would automatically update these API changes that are happening in the source system systems. Another engineer is also thinking about the source systems and when the data types broke and when new columns were added or removed from the data source, what happened? So we need a solution that can automatically accommodate for those changes. The third engineer is calling out something that's pretty obvious that the solution would need to have support for all of the data sources that are required for our predictions. So that's a requirement. And then one thing we haven't mentioned that you're thinking about is a credential sharing system. How are we actually getting data from our customers? Is it that we're asking our customers for their login credentials and creating a connection for them? What would that process be like? And how would this credential sharing system look inside of your app? At the end of the day, you want this to be a very easy and pleasant user experience for your customers. And that's what we're gonna take you through next. We're gonna show you a fictional application, Vandalay, that would walk you through it from the perspective of one of those customers and how they would connect data to that Vandalay application. And with that, I'm gonna turn you over to Jimmy Hooker, our lead product manager for Powered by Fivetran, who's gonna walk you through what that experience would look like. All right, hey everyone. So um, I'm going to play the role of a new sign up to the Vandalay application. So let's just say that I just signed up. I'm super curious about Vandalay. Vandalay's uh, website was incredibly convincing. They say that they can predict the future. Um, me, our company, we need predictions for the future in order to be successful. So I'm really excited about trying this out. But I know that Vandalay requires me to connect multiple third party uh, data resources. So I end up on Vandalay's application. Um, and I see immediately that I have a bunch of connectors to choose from. It looks like they have a breadth of data sources that they support, which is really cool because me as a company, I have this issue where my data is siloed in multiple different locations. 
So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to start with HubSpot. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And it's going to pop up the screen here. And it looks like Vandalay uses Fivetran to replicate data from HubSpot securely. And that sounds great to me because I know that my data in HubSpot is really important to me. And I want to make sure that that data is handled securely as it goes into the Vandalay application. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. We'll go to Instagram Business here, Google Ads, and let's get Shopify since I think these are the core things that Vandalay needs in order for it to make uh, some early predictions about uh, my specific scenario. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that those connectors were successfully syncing. So I'm going to go to the connectors page. And the connectors page is showing that HubSpot, Instagram, Google Ads, and Shopify are all active and syncing perfectly. So I'm super excited about this. Can't wait for Vandalay to show me the analytics that are gonna change the course of my business forever. So let's deep dive into this real quick um, because I wanna dig into uh, some of the features of this application, um, how common this scenario is, and how we can uh, talk through how this can help you. So I'm gonna jump in here and deep about Fivetran, um, how Fivetran at its core is different than powered by Fivetran and some of those nuanced differences. So let's jump in. So standard Fivetran, Fivetran for your organization. This is kind of our bread and butter. This is what we've made a reputation on. Um, this allows you to integrate multiple uh, siloed data sources into a single destination uh, data warehouse like Snowflake or Redshift or BigQuery or any of these big names. It makes it so that you can bolt on some sort of analytics uh, application like Looker or Tableau um, or a number of any other ones that makes it so that you can stitch together uh, a holistic understanding of what's going on in your business so that you can make strategy uh, or you can build a strategy based on numbers that are accurate, right? Uh, this is hugely valuable to any data-driven organization. And this is kind of a big, this is a big part of why we are who we are. And then Fivetran for your application, which is what we're talking about right now with Powered by Fivetran, allows you to essentially take advantage of those incredible data, data pipelines that we built originally for organizations and allow you to build them into your application itself. So we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail now. So standard Fivetran, um, the smartest and most reliable data pipelines in the industry. Um, we have 180 plus pre-built integrations expertly curated schemas so that the data lands in the normalized, uh, same way. It's self-healing and fully managed, which means that we handle things like schema drift, API changes, we're on it. Transformations, because data doesn't magically model itself. Um, a lot of businesses have kind of standardized uh, things that they want to do with data that comes from these different third-party sources. So we have pre-built data models. Uh, we make it really easy to have triggered jobs, and we have integrated DBT orchestration uh, within Fivetran itself. And then where we come in with Powered by Fivetran is we allow you to effortlessly take advantage of these data pipelines that Fivetran has built and build them into your application with embeddable authentication and make it really easy for your end users to add their credentials and start syncing data to destinations that you control. And really what this looks like in practice is just three screens. So similar to that PDF demo that I just showed you for Vandalay, um, you generally have a third-party source selection screen, then you have authentication, and then you have wanting to understand the connector state. So in this example, we have Salesforce. You click on the Salesforce logo, you enter the credentials and authorize them, and then you are redirected back to a dashboard or connector management uh, screen. So the way that we frame Fivetran is really two major flavors. PDF embedded is our really fast and easy way to integrate five, powered by Fivetran. Um, it makes it so that with just a couple uh, API integrations, you can put pop-ups inside of your application that collect credentials from users securely and make it so that you can sync data to the destination that you can control. Um, PDF headless is where we give you the APIs where you can essentially create the equivalent of our connect cards uh, right in your application if you've got the design and front end team resources to be able to dedicate to that. 
So we've had a lot of talk, a lot of examples. Show me an actual Connect card. What does this look like in customer applications? Well, it looks a lot like what we've shown you, shown you already. So this is a customer called CaliberMind. This is their uh, connector page. And it looks really similar, right? We have a grid of uh, third-party data source icons along with our name and a button to uh, connect them. You click the button. It pops up the Fivetran Connect Card pop-up where a user can authorize their credentials. And then it redirects back to the application screen where it shows uh, the connector state. So you can see here in the example that we've got HubSpot and Salesforce and that they're syncing successfully. Here's another customer called Daydream. Uh, they're a little bit different in that they have things popping up in the modal, but otherwise, you know, we've got a really similar UI. Um, it's a grid of third-party data source icons. You go ahead and click on one of those. In this example, it's Stripe. Um, it allows you to authenticate against uh, the Stripe application. Um, and once you successfully do so, um, it goes ahead and redirects you back to the Daydream dashboard where you can see analytics uh, for the applications that you've uh, connected. So I will pass it back to Shane, who will give us a, a quick recap of what we've discussed today. Thank you, Jimmy. So we have covered a lot of content in a short period of time. What are three things that we can leave you with to think about after? The first of which is build answer generating apps, not data pipelines. And we talked about what are your customers seeing in the Vandalay example, and maybe with your application, it's the analytics, it's the user interface of your application and not necessarily the data pipelines. And so when you're choosing a solution, whether it's powered by Fivetran or, or another one, make sure that the solution has guaranteed uptime. You don't want your predictions to be impacted by data pipelines going down, that they have some element of self-healing and automation so that when changes happen in the source, it can automatically accommodate for those. And then equally, if not more important, you need access or support rather for the data, data sources that you need for your predictions. So just a few things to think about when your product team is going to market and you're develop developing your application, where do you want to focus your resources? The second is a very important part of the data access process, which happens, I guess, after data is accessed, and that is around transformations. Data doesn't magically model itself. You want to be able to land data in your warehouse and get as quickly as possible to meaningful analytics. The one thing I'll call out here are Five trans DBT packages, which we have for now dozens of data sources, and we're continuing to build these out. And what these do is take data after it's landed in your destination, apply aggregations to them, and turn them into helpful and really the most popular forms of reports for those data sources or combinations of data sources. It might not be everything you need for what you want to expose to your customers, but it's going to greatly speed the time for you to get to the analytics that you do want to provide. The last thing I'll mention is three screens. We talked about the importance of three screens and providing a simple experience to your customers. If you are not providing an experience for your customers to self-serve uh, an authentication or to self-serve their ability to connect their data source to your application, you're gonna have to get it in potentially uncomfortable and insecure ways. So you would have to, over email or over phone, or over screen share, get access to those credentials. So the simplicity of Powered by Fivetran, a large value is the ability to allow your customers themselves without ever logging into Fivetran, the ability to connect their data to your app. And on the next screen, we'll show you a few places you can go if we've piqued your interest, hopefully, in this walkthrough of Powered by Fivetran. If you're ready to get started, we have a PBF Quick Start Guide, which walks you through step-by-step -step everything you need to know about implementing Powered by Fivetran. If you'd like a more tailored demo, if you have specific questions about what we showed, if you'd like to see more than what we showed in our demo, then you can sign up for a demo with one of our solutions engineers. And then finally, if you are an early stage startup, you may qualify for a new program that we just launched that allows you to get access to Powered by Fivetran free for one year. So we will either provide the uh, links to these in an email after or 
some other way that I'm not sure about right now, but we will provide this to you so you can access these resources after. And with that, I'll just thank everyone very much for your attention. Jimmy, thank you so much for taking, through, taking us through that demo and through those slides. Uh, we really hope that you're excited about Power by Five Trend because we are. And with that, I will wish everyone a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Thanks so much. Thank you all.